One major problem with Midjourney is that the images it produces are rarely big enough to satisfy the serious user. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can get the most out of your AI images made with Midjourney and also how you can upscale it using either Photoshop or another service I found online. So that way you've got some really high res images that you can use for your projects. So the first one we're gonna look at is I've got this Lego Samurai Man that I made and this is obviously just the first render. We've got 256 by 256 pixels and it's obviously, it's not very big. Obviously we wanna upscale it by choosing one of these to upscale, which if I switch to the one I upscaled originally, and you can see it here is 1024 by 1024 pixels. And it doesn't look too bad, but if I had to actually print this, like at a commercial printer, it wouldn't be very high resolution. So as you normally would in Discord, I've gone in and gone upscale to max because I want to maximize what I get out of it and we've got a resolution here. So this is our maximized uh, file, 1664 by 1664 pixels, not too bad. And if I zoom in, we can see the quality is not too bad either. It's bigger, but it's still not quite as big as we'd like it. But we've got an idea now of how what the resolution of a square image size is, but there's actually a few other resizes that we can try. So you see here, I've tried light upscale redo and beta upscale redo. So this is our up light upscale and it's actually only 1024 by 1024 pixels. It's actually gotten smaller and decreased the detail. That might work for you, it might not, depending on the image. But if we switch to a beta, a beta upscale, this file is actually much larger. And if I zoom in to 100%, it is actually, it's actually 2048 by 2048 pixels and it's starting to look decent, but the problem is we've lost a lot of detail. And sometimes what we're creating is actually very highly detailed. We wanna retain that detail because if we compare this to the original, you can see we just got more detail even though it's actually a smaller image. So uh, it's, it's actually not a perfect solution, but it's one worth noting. However, we can actually get high resolution images out of mid journey by playing with the aspect ratio. So if I make the aspect ratio one to one, then we get this 1024 by 1024 pixels. What happens if I try TV aspect ratio like 16 to nine? It ends up being 1792 by 1024 pixels. So all it does is make it wider without actually shrinking the height. Now, if I take this up as high as say 21 to nine, it actually goes to 2304 by 1024 pixels. And this works whether you rotate it one way or the other, like the images on the screen. Now we can still upscale these to max. We'll try the 16 to nine and we'll upscale to max and also do a beta upscale or redo to see what results we get. So we have the original upscale 1024 by 1792. The max upscale is 1152 by 2048. and Also a beta upscale at 1536 by 2688 pixels. However, we've lost a lot of detail in the branches by choosing the beta upscale option. Now we switch to the 21 to nine or the nine to 21 and you'll notice there's no option for max upscale because the image is actually too large and therefore mid journey won't actually let us upscale it. So there are limitations to how far you can go with the aspect ratio. Another thing to take note is this image is actually 22 to nine, just a bit more than 21 to nine. And now that 1024 pixel width has gone. So as we go beyond about 21 to nine, you start to lose resolution of the width. So it seems like there's a bit of a total pixel um, sort of budget that you're allowed when creating these images. So you can only go so far if you wanna maximize your resolution. So I would recommend probably like a maximum of uh, 21 to nine if you wanna maximize your resolution, but a minimum of 16 to nine so if you want to, you can upscale, but you're still getting more than just your standard one by one size image. If you're looking for something a little bit different, you can also try this new feature, which is at the time of recording available called Remaster. It actually recreates the image entirely, but you get a much larger upscale. So this particular image is 2034 by 1536. However, it changed the aspect ratio, which is not ideal, but the overall image looks a lot better but it is an option to consider when you're doing this and uh, to try and maximize what you can get out of mid journey. But what we're gonna look at next is actually upscaling using AI upscalers in Photoshop slash Lightroom or another service called Image Larger. So I've opened it up in Lightroom. If you want more information about this, I will do a detailed video on how you can do this in Photoshop and Lightroom. The link will be in the description, but I've opened it up, I've added it, I go into add photos and all I need to do is right click and go to enhance and it'll give me the option to use what's called super resolution. 
You can see when I click here, it shows me the difference between one and the other. I think that's pretty cool. So we're gonna click Enhance. So now our photo has a little two in the thumbnail. So if I click on that little two, it actually opens up two images. One is the original and the other is, I believe, the upscale. I go to 100% on both, 100%. You can see the difference in size already between the two. So Photoshop, has, uh, sorry, Lightroom has actually upscaled this image and added in some details. So I can now right click and export that photo to a JPEG and now we can compare it to the original. So here I have the original image zoomed in, overlaid over the new. So if I actually uh, come over and turn that image off, you can see how much sharper it is. There's a few artifacts there, but if I actually go to 100%, which is actually what it's at now, you can see how much sharper and larger the image actually is. So it's a great way to upscale. However, if you want to be really serious about upscaling, the next service image larger is actually even better than Photoshop. Okay, so this is imagelarger.com. And uh, if you head here, you can see they've got a pretty good upscale service, simple to use. You just log in, hit select images, upload your image. And we're gonna go four times. We wanna make it four times bigger. And we're just gonna go start. Now our image is ready for download, so we're gonna download and check it out. So I've taken the image into Photoshop and it's actually uh, over 9,000 pixels wide. So I'm actually gonna just zoom in and you can see how good of a job it's actually done. Like we're zoomed right in here and you can see all the details and I'm gonna just switch. I've got the original overlaid and I'm gonna to switch to show you the difference. So you can see the difference between, you can see the difference between this file and this file. There's a bit of a display error on here, but you can see what I mean because I'm recording, but the difference is uncanny. So that is a great service if you're really looking to maximize your image. But how well does this work on other styles and resolutions? I've got this one image, which is just a straight up 1024 by 1024 render, no max upscale. I've also got this sketch to show you how well you can upsize uh, certain sketches like this ink dripping drawing. And also this strange looking cyberpunk banana. We're gonna see the results on all these different images as they all started much lower res than the example we just tried and are completely different styles. So the first one, the banana, it actually looks pretty good, pretty great when you zoom in. You can see how much sharper it is and you can see the difference pretty easily. But when we switch to the ink dripping drawing, again, you can see how this would be great for printing because it sharpens up the black and whites, makes things look a little bit better than before. And finally, it's actually done a pretty good job with this other green image that uh, it's sort of not quite super sharp, but it has upscaled and sort of kept its smoothness. So it's gonna be sort of more suitable for print than the original, which is uh, pretty cool. And these are all using, sort of comparing all three platforms. So I hope that's given you some insight on how you can get the most out of your images with AI or Mid Journey. These services are linked to in the description below. Otherwise, if you're looking for a more detailed tutorial on Photoshop or Lightroom, there's a video on the screen right now. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.